This morning we bring you two slices of American history, one presidential, the other edible. Plymouth Cheese was formed in Vermont by the father of our 30th president, Calvin Coolidge. In the building next door, Plymouth is also the place where Coolidge was sworn in, famously in the middle of the night after his predecessor died suddenly. One part of Plymouth, the presidential site, has barely changed at all since 1890. The same can't be said for Plymouth Cheese, which has gone through its shares of ups and downs, but is now shepherded by a husband and wife team who have brought back its glory days, while setting a path forward for other artisans and farmers across the country. Why cheese? It's a time capsule. It's more than a piece of cheese. It's a piece of American history. A dozen years ago, Jesse Warner took on a monumental job. Revive the nation's second oldest cheese factory, Plymouth Cheese. So it's interesting with cheese because we have to be thinking like, what was it like one year ago when we made this cheese? Especially artisan cheese. And what were the cows eating that day? What was the temperature? What was the humidity? It all has an effect. Oh, it's like the cheese you normally have, but way better. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Warner uses original recipes from 1890, when John Calvin Coolidge Sr. established the company in the same building Warner still uses today. At this place, history, farming, and food converge. That was film footage taken in the summer of 1924. In the building just a stone's throw from Plymouth Cheese, John's son, Calvin Coolidge, was sworn in as the nation's 30th president in the middle of the night by kerosene lamp after Warren G. Harding died suddenly. This Bible lay on the table under my hand when I took the oath of office as president, August 3rd, 1923, Calvin Coolidge. All these buildings have been carefully preserved. Bill Jenny is the regional historic site administrator. Everything we're seeing now walking down this road is as Kelvin Coolidge saw it. Right. It really is like walking back in time. It is, especially in the early evening. You can walk down the street and almost imagine Coolidge right beside you. What does it mean to have the Cheese Factory back? Cheese Factory is a great part of the historic site. Cheese making in Vermont was born from necessity. Farmers had no way to get the milk they produced to cities without it spoiling. So they turned what they couldn't sell into cheese to extend its shelf life. As pasteurization, the process of neutralizing potentially harmful bacteria and refrigerated trucks became standard, locally produced dairy could now reach entire regions of the country. From there, mass production took over. And by a generation ago, local cheesemaking here was almost lost forever. Cheesemaking in Vermont effectively disappeared and then has now come back to the point where more cheese is being made in Vermont than per capita in any other place in the country. How did, how did that happen? I think we've had a real uh, food renaissance recently. Certainly it started happening with a lot of back to the landers in the 80s. Including your parents? Yeah. Werner grew up on a small farm in northern Vermont. In 2009, he leased the old Coolidge building from the state and began rebuilding Plymouth cheese bit by bit. Today, he and his wife, Sarit, run an operation that is bursting in popularity. Every detail is authentic, from the taste to the throwback packaging. These stencils are actually from the turn of the century. I was very inspired by um, this graphic language, and so we built upon that to make our new cheese boxes. It is a far cry from Sarit's days working in the New York City fashion industry. As I like to say, the fashion snobs have nothing on the cheese snobs, but... Um... The fashion snobs have nothing on the cheese snobs. <laughs> but it's a great... No, people <laughs> care very deeply about, about um, being a part of um, the, the artisan economy of of this country, and, and so do we. But the people, the cheese snobs who are coming here, I mean, some people just pulled up. I mean, they're not the people who are buying $5,000 Oscar de la Renta dresses, right? They just want quality food, quality cheese. They want cheese. quality food. They want real food. They want quality food. They care where their food comes from, who's making it. And you know what? They can taste the love and the passion that goes into this. How's it going? Good. In Plymouth, Warner has gone out of his way to support local dairy farms, including the one owned by Seth Leach, who was a seventh generation farmer. If it wasn't for him, what would happen to you? Uh, my, my path would be a little tougher moving forward, for sure. Tougher as in you may have had to shutter the farm. 
Oh, yeah. Thanks. Let me know about next week. The trends in dairy farming nationwide are not good, which is why it's so remarkable to see a business like this succeed against the odds. A lot of people don't understand how cheese is made. It's quite simple at its root. It only, there's only four ingredients in cheese. It's milk, culture, salt, and enzymes. And out of those four ingredients, you can make thousands of different types of cheese. So what part of the process are we in now? This is toward the end? It's like he's making fries. Yeah, they look like french fries. Yeah, they look yeah. like yeah. This is the part when we're starting to add the salt. Salt is very important for cheese making, for preserving and for flavor. I never knew what a workout making cheese is. This is the fun part. <laughs> and by fun you mean, it's like one of those things you name for the opposite. <laughs> Some people I think stay away from cheese because they don't think it's the healthiest option. No, it's definitely the healthiest option. It is. It is. Raw milk, whole milk cheese is definitely the healthiest option. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a true expression of the natural environment. Um, it's full of probiotics, it's full of amino acids, and proteins and fats, and uh, all kinds of naturally occurring bacteria that you only find in nature. Hit that switch. Well, there are plenty of arguments for and against raw milk and the bacteria found in it. Like with any food, cheese is probably best consumed in moderation. Today, Werner has expanded to produce a dozen varieties of Plymouth cheese, all while staying loyal to a legacy. You're keeping things traditional while moving forward. That's the idea is, you know, use these techniques and these traditions and make a product that, that was quality at the time and try to bring that into the future and share that with people that don't necessarily live right here in Plymouth. Best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And we have uh, we have a, a, a large sampling. For you <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think you have the Plymouth mm. original Plymouth mm. right here, mm. um, oh, but yeah. also we have delicious. What? East Meadow garlic peppercorn, mm. hot pepper. Mm. You're going to take some hot pepper. I'm with definitely you. taking. Okay. I'll take any. I'll take any and all. Um, black truffle here. Ooh, yeah, that too. The well, hunter right <laughs> old, is the older ones. All, they're aged between 90 days and two years. We're delicious. Yeah, they. I really mean, Jesus. I best. know. Oops. Well, it, it's also better with wine. Cheers. 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 To you, Cheers. Good story, you, Jeff. You, you really, really good you story. Plymouth. And I liked you getting down and dirty, helping them out. In That's the... right. How to do <laughs> it. Hair was all over the place. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Looking a little more clumped there. Jeff buddy. works when he's <laughs> he working. He does. Yeah.